Some years ago, the first randomized controlled trials uh, performed in the United States um, on status epilepticus have been published. That was in the beginning of the 90s until the end of the 90s. But then suddenly um, no trial was performed in status epilepticus. No pharma industry was interested in the topic because they said, well, you see, we can treat the first stages of status epilepticus uh, with benzodiazepines. It's a heterogeneous condition. There's no return of investment. And all these arguments coming from economically oriented uh, companies, which is understandable. So in end of 2000, so 2007, we started to make uh, biannual regular congresses, the London Innsbruck Colloquium on Status Epilepticus, it's a little bit of advertisement, which tried to rekindle the interest of the scientific community into status epilepticus. And out from these discussions and the, at the colloquia, a group which was led by Chaideep Kapoor um, and uh, Hannah Koch from London, Chaideep Kapoor from um, USA, um, started to have the idea to make a randomized controlled trial. So this was a masterpiece of, of uh, randomized controlled trials with anti-epileptic drugs. It is published in the most outstanding journal in New England Journal of Medicine. Other trials followed in children. And now we have much more evidence in the, in the established uh, stage of status epilepticus. Then suddenly, in the refractory and super refractory uh, status epilepticus where patients are comatose and the seizures go on and on and on and you don't know really what is the cause. So several attempts have been made there. So I think the really important thing which happened in the past years is that many groups are interested in status epilepticus looking at the different causes, immune-mediated causes, um, genetic causes, metabolic causes, structural uh, causes, and treat them appropriately. Second, randomized controlled trials of high-class evidence uh, have been performed with intravenous anti-seizure medications and also with um, anti-seizure medications of alternative routes. Because if you don't find a, a venous excess, you are in trouble. You have to stop the seizure activity and you don't get the drugs in because the patient cannot swallow. So intranasal is an option. Buccal is an option. And um, maybe also intrapulmonary um, uh, inhalation of substances can interrupt status very early. The third very important key message is if you don't identify the major causes of status epilepticus, vascular, traumatic, tumor, um, metabolic, toxin-related, you should go into very early into the deep phenotyping of the status epilepticus and look for rare causes, rare infection, immune disorders, um, and um, paraneoplastic syndromes, which is extremely important, of course, to treat. So these are three very important steps which improve the, um, the health care.